How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Hey, congratulations for uh, stealing school. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> it, I actually uh, remember uh, speaking to your cast. I want to say at the Napa Valley uh, Film Festival a couple of years ago for, for your film. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's so cool. Nice. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's been a while, but I, I, you must be so proud that it's actually coming out pretty soon for the rest of the world to see, so. Um, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, it's been a while, you're right. So I'm, uh, I'm just, I guess I'm just waiting for it to happen more or less. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, let, let's start off with the easy question for you, Lee. Where sure. did the original idea came from for uh, Stealing School? Um, well, I, I'd seen a courtroom drama, an Israeli movie called Yet, that was very inspiring because it was also like sort of a courtroom. It was all set in one room. And so I thought that it was very, a very economical way to make a movie. So I thought that if I was going to make a first feature, I should make something that's in one room, but is also a story vehicle that's able to let me tell um, a story that's interesting to me and to be funny and dramatic and like hopefully suspenseful. And um, I thought for a while, and this is the idea that I came up with because of my own experience in university, not that I ever cheated, but just that uh, I knew that these sorts of mock trials existed um out there in, in the university world so in in the case for cheating for academics do they even have these type of really mock trials they do they, they do i did a lot of research into them and um there, there's no one right way to do it um so every school is very different so like i basically just took a bunch of different ways that schools do it and put them into a format that i thought worked for my movie um, so really no school can say that I did it the wrong way because they all do it differently, but they do exist pretty much for every university. They have some sort of procedure to have a trial for if they suspect someone of cheating. That's, that's actually uh, pretty funny is because, uh, because I, I taught uh, at a college uh, for 17 years. Oh, no and, way. And most of the time we just brush it off. And my, my boss is actually say, you know what, if they, and unless you've seen it, then you, you have to let it go because we don't want to bother with this kind of stuff. What what subject were you teaching? Economics. Oh, I see. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, it's, yeah okay. I mean, it's, it's a lot of plagiarism in economics. I mean, I'm not sure. You know, uh, um, you, you'd be surprised. I actually, at one, one instance, I actually caught uh, three students cheating where they had the smart kid in the middle and mm. the other two kids were copying his test yeah. in the middle. And when they submitted it, they all had the same answers. Yeah. And I got confessions from two of the cheaters, but not the one who actually um, had all the right answers. He right. basically said that there was no cheating going on, while the other two actually admitted that there was an orchestrated plan. Well, it sounds like to me, you just set up your own little trial and you were able to interrogate these people. So technically, you kind of did... You kind of did the uh, same thing. <laughs> I, I did, but the problem was uh, because only two of the three admitted it, I could not enforce anything. <laughs> oh, man, that's a shame. Isn't it, doesn't it suck how the law works sometimes, right? You got to get a full confession out of all of them. I know. It's just, it's, yeah. the, the process itself was, was kind of difficult. But um, when, when you wanted to create a mock trial, like some, something like this, Yep. You did a lot of research. So how did you want to basically develop the characters for a storyline for, for a film like this? Ooh, um, well, I know I wanted to talk about an Asian cheating because uh, Asians have a perception of being cheaters in um, high-end universities and colleges these days. And I knew that was a hot topic. And I knew that there was some, I, I knew that there was that perception that Asians could not write good essays, Asians weren't good writers, and Asians don't really care about you know, the liberal arts side of things. They just want their computer science degree and get a job, right? Um, so I knew that that was a thing that was happening in the world. And that's kind of where it started from. And then, um, you know, I'm an English and history major. So I, I knew how essays are written. And I also knew how essays can be cheated on. So um, I just kind of put those two things together. And then I had a, one of my best friends is an academic and he helped me sort of develop the, the, uh, the, the Keith character, the bad guy, um, as a sort of the worst version of someone who 
you know, is very deep into academia and, and probably has a lot of white privilege and doesn't feel like it's fair that someone who cheated a little bit should be allowed to graduate and basically be successful while he is not allowed to be successful. So um, I, I really do appreciate that you actually brought, uh, you know, the Asian lead as as the main character for that, because it, because that's a rarity in um, in this in this in this type of business now these days, but how did you want to basically, um, you know, walk that line not to play into, you know, the stereotypes? Oh man. Um, well, I, I, I never want to play into stereotypes. So I, I was always very aware of them. And I think that, um, I, I guess I really wanted to trick the audience. I don't know. Maybe tricks, not the right word, subvert the audience's expectations, I guess would be the best way to put it because um i know what the audience is thinking as soon as they see her they're like oh you know she probably cheated you know um so i wanted to sort of take that expectation and play with it throughout the movie um in terms of not playing into expectations you know i just i was just very very cognizant of how asians have been portrayed on screen thus far in the history of like cinema or western cinema and uh, and on tv and i and every step of the way i was trying to not make it stereotypical to not make it just a prejudicial um thing that i've seen like a hundred times before on tv so i was always trying to make it something different or something unique or something that was more uh, multi-layered and had more dimension to it than what i'd seen beforehand you know there there the trend lately is to uh to push for more asians into uh, movies how, how how do you feel about that is that opening doors for you um I mean, it hasn't opened that many doors yet, but uh, hopefully soon. I, again, the movie hasn't come out yet, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm very passionate about telling Asian stories. I think I'm pretty good at it. Um, I am from Canada, which is a little different than being Asian American, but it's also similar in a lot of di in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, I would love to tell more Asian stories, and I think it's not, you know, I think that uh, the white audiences, like in Napa, where you were, for example, who and they were like very white in Napa. And they, I think they were uh, maybe surprised to find that they related to the main character more than they had expected. And, um, you know, and that's ultimately what the goal is to try to make these, tell these stories is not to be like, here's an Asian story. It's like, here's an Asian story, but it's like also very similar to your life and your struggles and your story. That's the ultimate goal. Um, it's, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to separate. I'm just trying to like sort of, uh, you know, bond people together through shared experiences of, you know, persecution and, you know, prejudice and, um, you know, uh, chasing success and things like that. Since, uh, since you brought it up uh, that, that, that you're from um, Canada, and obviously this is much more of a Canadian story than an American story, are Asians treated a little bit differently up in Canada or pretty much the same? Well, uh, it's hard for me to say because I don't have a lot of experience in America, but I would, I would argue that um, it's pretty similar. I would say it, it's, um, it's a bit more, I guess the racism is a bit more subtle up here, but it's definitely, it definitely exists. And um, I wouldn't trust any of the Canadian outlets who might purport that Canada is like this racist free wonderland. That's definitely not true. Um, but it's, it, I, I guess it's less um, volatile than it is in America. Even, but even me saying that is some people would disagree with that. Um, again, I just don't have that much to compare it to, but I can say that racism is alive and healthy up here in Canada, and that I personally experienced it, especially during the beginning of the beginning stages of um, COVID nineteen, where you know people really did not want to stand close to me at the grocery store. Um, that was that was a real shock to me at the time because I knew that people felt that way, but that was a real physical manifestation of something that I believe had existed in this country for a long time, but it was just like, it was shocking when it, when it first happened. Wow. That is, that is, uh, that is eye opening, especially the fact that um, I'm here in the United States and we, we, we face this uh, all the time uh, ourselves. Um, let, let's talk about the production of, of, of your film because, uh, because I love the fact that you kept everything simple. It's basically like a courtroom, so, sort of like, a, like Tom Cruise's uh, A Few Good Men where <laughs> yeah. everything was, was in that courtroom. Did that make production a lot easier that basically you just kept it simple uh, really at kind of like the location and then maybe move to the bathroom once in a while? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, we really made use of all the bathrooms. The guy's bathroom, the girl's bathroom, you know, hallways, staircases, everywhere. Uh, yeah, that, that was a, a economical choice, I guess. You know, it's always easier to keep things in, in sort of one location. That was all mostly one building. I mean, some filmmakers are even better at it than I am. Like some people can make an entire movie in just like one room. Um, they don't have, they don't even need to go to the bathroom, right? They can just do it in that one room. Um, I'm really impressed with people who can do that. Um, but yeah, no, like it's, it was fully just like a, a way to make sure that you can spend the money on things like, um, shooting days and lights and, and, um, and paving the actors and getting lunch for everyone. And instead of like having to pay money to move a location every few days, just because, you know, you, you need to go somewhere else. It, we, we just got to use, we got to dump all the equipment into one place, go to the same place every day. Is a convenient location for everyone to go to and um, just be able to simply shoot as much as possible and um, get as much good material as possible without having to worry about the logistics of moving around. I'm curious, was this on an actual college campus or just, or just a place that looks like a college campus? So it's, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to this really, but it's, it was on the University of Toronto campus but the room that we were in wasn't really a part of University of Toronto. It was a part of like a, a boys' private school, I think. It was mm. I, I, to this day, I, I still don't know. But like it was, and that room is like half library, half lounge. It was very weird. But um, but short answer, yes, it was technically on University of Toronto campus. But we couldn't call it that for for reasons, for obvious reasons. <laughs> so because because the production was so simple um did you have a lot of shooting days or do you manage to quickly get this done we only had 13 um yeah so that's pretty fast um but i i'd say that's pretty good i mean obviously you want more days and um but i thought 13 days was really good for what we got in terms of material we got to shoot everything that i wanted to we got to tell the story that i wanted to tell um you know do I want more days and more money? Yes, of course I do. But um, you, you, you have to work with what you're given. Um, some filmmakers, even filmmakers much more established, uh, much more established, much more successful than I am, have never gotten into a situation where they had too much money or too much time or anything like that. So I don't expect to encounter that problem anytime soon. So what, what do you suppose was your greatest challenge on a production like this for a stealing school? Oh, man. Um, greatest challenge... That's a good question. I, I mean, is everything a good answer? I don't know. It, it's just like, it's, it's just, it's the first time you do everything, which is like, you know, it, if it's the first time you do one thing, it's fine. But like, I, I think endurance was actually really hard. I was very shocked at how draining it was on the body just to be standing for that much during the day. Not that I was always standing, but like, generally I was walking around on my feet all day and I had no I I didn't think about how physical the job was just moving around all day having to think all day I had to, I was eating constantly and I, I said that like if I had to give a piece of advice to like someone making their first feature film it would be you know two three months before you go into shooting really start to focus on your health like start eating healthy start exercising try not to drink you know like um just eat really healthy get lots of sleep because that stuff, that's the stuff that's going to help you during production, your health. It's not going to be the storyboards that you plan that aren't going to work. It's not going to be like these magical ideas that are never going to work. It's going to be like, can you, can you be healthy enough and sharp enough to think in the moment? Um, is your brain healthy? Is your body healthy? Um, that's the stuff that's going to save you during production more than any other sort of planning, in my opinion. It sounds like you learned a lot um, for being on your first feature film. You, you want to do this again? I mean, yeah, if, if someone will let me, sure, I guess I will. It was pretty fun. Um, yeah, I, I would love to do it again. And, uh, you know, I would also love to venture into things like TV and whatnot, where things are a little bit less stressful, I think, um, because they generally have bigger budgets. But, yeah, of course, I would love to do it again. It's It's a real bonding experience. And if you get the right crew, you get the right story, you get the right – you know, situation, I think it can feel like for a lot of people um, who worked on it, a very meaningful experience that will stay with them for the rest of my lives. I know, I, I know it's going to stay with me for the rest of my life. 
That's that is terrific. Well, I, I don't want to forget about your cast. Tell us why Celine and Jonathan were perfect for their roles. Um, well, Celine, Celine came in and she like really scared me with her performance. Um, and I was like, yeah, I think I want someone who like re is really scary. So um, I chose I, I chose her mainly because she was she threatened me. Not like she didn't physically threaten me, but like her performance threatened me, um, which is what I wanted. Um, Jonathan, I had seen in I had seen in this movie called Twenty One and Over, and I known him personally through a friend. And I saw him in 21 and over and he's in real life. He's not a very big guy. He's not muscly. He's not very intimidating. He's not very scary um, per se, but in that movie in 21 and over, he played basically like a bully and he was very convincing. And I, I just like, it, it stuck with me. And after I saw that, I was like, wow, he'd be really good for this if he would do it. And he read the script and he liked it. And um, he came in and did it and it was perfect. And um, that's how I ended up with those two wonderful leads. I, I think I think what you what you did uh, you you managed to develop a great chemistry be, between the two for 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 what it is um, it was it was riveting. Is, is thank what you, it, thank you so much. Could actually thank say. You. So uh, so Lee, let, let me uh, leave with one more thought because obviously um, you know right now we're speaking virtually because the world is just crazy. But but I do know uh, Toronto is kind of open for uh, for filming uh, right now. But yeah, uh, kind of yeah. How how are you staying sane and creative during all this all this time? If I'm being honest with you, I'm not staying sane and I'm not staying creative. Um, uh, like I said, I try to be really healthy. The only thing you can really control right now is your own sort of health. So I know if I drift off into like eating crap food or like not exercising or you know um, you know drinking a little too much for no reason, that's that's the stuff that's going to really make me go crazy. So. I'm just mostly focusing on the things I can control, which is mostly my health, my mental sanity as much as I can. And, um, you know, watching a lot of Netflix like everyone else, I guess. Um, I, I, there's not much to it. I, I don't think anyone, what, Toronto's in a really bad lockdown right now. I'm not sure if you know that. Um, we can't go anywhere. I can't get, it's harder to get a haircut than it is to get marijuana in this city. Uh, marijuana is legal, haircuts aren't. So that's great. Um, <laughs> So I, I've just been, you know, I, I don't think anyone that I know in the city has figured out a decent way of coping with what's happening. We're all just trying to hang in there until vaccines, until the summer. Um, so, yeah, I don't have a good answer. We're just all trying to hang in, hang in there. Well, you know what? I, I, I wish you well and um, hang, hang in there, uh, Lee, because, uh, because steal, stealing school, a lot of people's going to end up uh, watching it because they're, they're at oh. home, so... Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's, it's I hope great, so. It's a great movie to watch it over and over again. So, hey, thank you very much uh, for speaking with us, Lee. Oh, no, thank you for um, thank you for inviting me to speak and giving me the time to uh, chat with you. I really appreciate it. Hey, not a problem. Ne next time, I can't wait to, uh, to, to hear about your next project. <laughs> great. I can't wait to tell you about it when it happens. <laughs> Terrific. Bye now. Great, great. Bye-bye.